In 2018, we started Qubit to fix a problem. Product analytics platforms weren't built for the cloud. Companies like Mixpanel and Amplitude developed architectures to work with traditional data stacks, forcing you to give up control of your data by creating batch processes or embedding SDKs that regularly cause problems. We experienced the pain of this firsthand at Smule as we grew the company to 50 million monthly active users. Mixpanel and Amplitude failed to keep pace because we were generating 2 billion events a day. No batch process or SDK could handle it, and multiple copies of data made it impossible to rectify errors that would persist if any data went missing. Sound familiar? Today, I'm going to show you how shockingly simple we make it to understand users' behaviors to shape product decisions. What I'm about to show you puts you back in control of your user data. We never copy your data nor use an SDK. We simply talk directly to your data wherever it is stored. Today, you'll see why so many customers value taking inspiration from their most highly engaged users and applying those learnings to a wider audience to shape product decisions in real time. I'll show you a demo based on sample data from a made-up music app. You'll notice that everything is clearly defined in business language. This is so people of all technical abilities can use Qubit to make data-driven decisions. We seamlessly connect to your existing marketing automation or user acquisition channels to give you a single source of truth. So let's check out how your product managers, marketing leaders, and executives can get a 360 degree view of the full life cycle of your users by understanding user behavior. You probably already see some of the KPIs which are very common in the mobile world with consumer business, like daily active users. Qubit isn't your typical BI tool. It's 100% self-service and doesn't require an analyst to be involved. When you look at this data and you mouse over it, you can see the definition in plain business language. You don't need to be trained to write SQL or learn another tool. DAO is simply a function of unique users over an event called logged in. Very straightforward. Here we also have D2 retention, meaning the second day activity is divided by the first day's activity to see the percentage of users who come back on the second day. So the difference between the two is that you're counting the same users with a different filter condition. There is no need to install another tool when all metrics can be displayed in a single location. This is the dashboard where you can quickly view KPI metrics and understand the report. But the best part is that you can easily do an ad hoc query yourself. This is what we call formula. We have a lot of formulas pre-built with all these use cases considered, as you can see here, like funnel, path, retention, and cohort, which I'll show you today. Here I just loaded the daily active users function, which is unique users over an event called logged in. Now suppose I care about a specific age group. I select here and with two button clicks I'm able to execute a query to show me the breakdown by age bucket. So now that we can see our daily actives broken down by age groups. So it's, that's how easy and simple it is to see insights right here. Now we can manipulate the different age groups to eliminate some and showcase others, or view them in a different chart form like a percentage area chart. So this shows you the composition of our daily active users breaking down by age groups, and what's the percentage of them moving over time. It's very straightforward. And also, if you have some data scientists working with your user data, you can simply copy the SQL, export to CSV, or export to a Jupyter Notebook. So with one button click, you can pretty much get the data reloaded into another environment to do further analysis like modeling and all those things. So this is just one part of the query. Query can handle very complex queries using a multitude of different events and filters that your company already collects. Path is a great tool to quickly understand how users move from a starting event to an ending event using a same key diagram. You can employ this powerful feature to understand users' journey and identify potential design issues. Compare among different user groups and add or remove steps or reverse the direction of the path. For example, we'll select a starting and ending event from our fictional music app. After selecting these two events, we simply execute the query to see the path that users take. Here we can dissect the, the journey of a user takes from launching the event to listening, and we can also see in detail 
the other events that users may stumble across along the way. So now you can see if there are any design flaws, if users are confused, or what are the most active paths they are taking. And on top of that, you can build a very simple funnel for the same events. In this funnel, we'll analyze the conversion rate between each step of the user funnel. This can show you how many users dropped out of your registration or checkout flows and why. You can also slice and dice the data by cohorts or other breakdowns, showing you the conversion trend over time and sending you alerts automatically. We can rapidly create a funnel with three steps of launched, listen, and sync. Now we can also break this down by device family to see how a cohort of users perform who have different devices, like an iPhone 7 or an iPhone 8. Now as we're analyzing this over a day, we can expand this to see how people perform over a 15 day span, showing us multiple different funnels. Furthermore, we can now analyze this 15 day period and highlight the different iPhone devices that we are wanting to analyze to see if the conversion trend by device truly does change from older devices to newer devices. So this is something which is very hard to get from traditional BI tools, or at least you may hire a person who makes $200,000 a year to build this for you. But the beauty of Qubit is not only save you a lot of back and forth, but it gives the product people much more freedom to analyze the data that they have before them. So now they can answer their own questions with just a few button clicks, right? You don't need to be waiting or sending emails back and forth to get something back three hours later when you can get the answer you needed right away. Like Path and Funnel, to use retention, we just select starting and ending events. Like we've done for our other examples, we'll use launched, listen, and sing. Retention is actually a very critical KPI for any mobile app and is the primary driver for all your other KPIs. Now we are showing you a breakdown. Each row is a cohort of users who launched the app on that date and subsequent other days where they came back to complete either of our ending events, listen or sing. We can view this as a graph or as a chart to visualize the retention curve. So you can measure all the way out from five days to multiple weeks to a month or multiple months and so on even to a year. So you can always measure your subscription activity for people who are paying for the app or when they subscribe. The retention rate is crucial to increasing the LTV of your users. So usually this is the ultimate KPI for most consumer engagement apps. You want to retain users as long as possible and can now analyze where the best place to buy users from based on how they retain. You do this by attaching your marketing cohorts here so that you can break down retention by where users come from. Maybe this will show us that users convert from TikTok ads and retain better than those who come from Facebook, Google, or YouTube. So you can actually slice and dice by marketing cohorts as we have done here. to understand which campaigns bring you the best quality users, right? If you can increase retention a little bit, it's going to have an extremely positive impact on your overall business. Within Qubit, we constantly monitor your KPIs so that we can always understand if any anomalies occur. With our anomaly detection, we're running thousands of queries in the background trained against your historical data to understand when something outside the norm has occurred. Here we see in our daily active users that we had an unexpected jump in DAO. Depending on my role, I want to make the rest of my team aware of it. I click here, Diagnose button, and with that one click, I can now see it broken down by all the other factors that I view my data by and filter. So here I can see that it seems that everything's fairly flat until I get to country. This daily active user seems to be caused by a lift from Russia. 
So to communicate with my team, I simply select Add to Workspace. Name the workspace in which I want to work with. And now this is where we are able to communicate. We call this Slack for analytics. I can quickly take a screenshot of the chart that I'm looking at and annotate the part that I want to call out. So within a few clicks, I've now communicated the context of the question with the rest of my team. This is replacing taking screenshots and taking the time to write out an email to provide said context. Because now my team can come in here and see the exact query that I ran, see what I'm calling out here, that was a Russia Dow lift. And now they can also go back here to the diagnosis to see additional context for my frame of thought. Maybe someone from marketing on my team is viewing this and they scroll down here to see the different user types in which this lift may have been caused by. As we see here, there's an organic lift that causes this Dow jump. So we want to call that out and add it to the same workspace. With just a few clicks, I am now able to access that same workspace that I just dropped into. It can now leverage the drag and drop features available on all of our dashboards to quickly take another screenshot and annotate this to show the connection that I found. So now I've quickly identified that this issue that caused an unexpected Dow jump came from an organic lift in Russia. Further, if I want to analyze based off of this user type that we see here, I can select here and see the events that may have caused this. As we see, there's an event that happened right before this jump, which was a major promotion, and in this case was when our app was featured in the Russian App Store.